Welcome to Lessons in Life and Love with Rihanna Milne, where we show you how to have the positive mindset for success in all life areas. It's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 2 of Lessons in Life and Love podcast. I'm your host and global life and love coach, Rihanna Milne, coming to you every Friday on LessonsInLifeAndLove.com and on my app, Lessons in Life and Love, on the go. I'm all about helping you transform your life in all areas into one that you're passionate about and to help you attract and have the love that you deserve. I'm on a mad mission to change the way the world loves, so you'll learn how to have emotionally healthy, evolved, and conscious love and how to avoid toxic, painful, traumatic relationships, which seems too prevalent today. It's time to help you create the life that you desire and have the love that you deserve. So if you have a personal concern, I invite you to meet with me for a Life and Love Transformation Discovery Session this week. Just sign up at my website, rihannamilne.com. So let's dive in, love angels and transformers. Today is part three of the series, From Surviving to Thriving in Life, Love, and Career. Learning the Mindset for Success in All Life Areas. Be sure to hear part one, show 56, and part two, which is show 57, which can be found at my podcast archives website, LessonsInLifeAndLove.com. I hope you enjoy all the valuable information contained within this series. There's always issues in relationships. The important thing is that when they come up, that you're able to express your feelings with peace and calm, without fear, in a feeling of safety. That's what we teach as well. So coming from traumatic homes, we don't learn what a great loving relationship looks like, unfortunately, nor are we told dating advice. So I mean, if you happen to have a good mom that taught you that, that's amazing. And most are like the warnings. You better not go out with that one. You know, I mean, that's mostly what we hear is more warnings and stay away away from. I remember having some intimate conversations with my daughters, speaking to them about condoms and how to use tampons for their period. So I was one of those rare moms that talked about those things. Why? Because I wanted to be the mother I didn't have. I was one of those moms and a lot of kids used to come to my home in Fenton, New Jersey to gather around and say, Rihanna, can I ask you questions? And it's like, can you talk to your mom about this? I'm like, no. I didn't want to turn them away and not have them have their questions answered. But I've heard that a lot from my school students, you know, that they can't get these answers and it's important that they have them, you know, the facts about sex and sexuality. So if you are a a parent to young teens, don't put your head in the sand and pretend it's not happening. Empower them with education and knowledge and teach them why it's important to be careful and that they should treat their body as sacred the body temple, and they should not just give that away to anyone. It's a precious gift. It's a wonderful way to teach your kids about self-respect. If you are parents, please do educate both your young boys and girls as young teens about what to watch for. Okay. The guy says he's not looking for a commitment on the first date or even before we meet, and I want to get married eventually. Do I just stop seeing him all together if he asks me out again? Absolutely. You have to know if he's telling you he's not going to commit, he's not going to change his mind. He's very, very solid in telling you, at least he's upfront in telling you. That doesn't mean this isn't a person you couldn't have as a buddy or a friend. And that's perfectly fine. But you don't want to give your heart away. You don't want it to become too attached. You certainly don't want to become too intimate. Remember, time is precious. So if all your energy and attention is on this person that says he definitely doesn't want to be committed, then you don't want to put your time and attention there. You don't want him monopolizing your time all weekend when your time and energy should be going towards meeting other people and getting yourself out there using the dating skills that you need. Be very astute. This is what we call conscious dating. You're really listening to learn who is this person in front of you. And he says, I'm not looking for commitment. Okay, I appreciate you telling me that. Great, then we can be friends. And just leave it as that. And respect that at least he told you that. And that's someone that's a clear sign that you don't go further. A lot of men are waiting longer to get married. They want their career solidified. They want income. They want money in the bank. They want to feel like they can support a wife. 
Now, there are men that are clearly looking for marriage. I know when I advised my eldest daughter to try online dating, she didn't want to. And I said, you got to give it a go. It's just one of many ways to meet people, but let's give it a go. I said, just write a very honest profile and say you're definitely somebody looking for commitment and marriage. And the first guy that wrote her said the same thing on his. I'm definitely someone looking for commitment and a marriage. And they dated. He took her to dinner, brought her flowers on the first date, asked her, please don't talk to anyone in the next week. Give me a chance. And I love Charles, my son-in-law. He's absolutely amazing. He's like the son I never had. So they met on match and they were both very clear in what they wanted. So you have to know what you want and not compromise yourself or waste your time with people that aren't there. It's just a way that you have to find them to meet them. And there's all kinds of strategies around that that I teach you. The next section is part one, lesson three, the mindset for success that leads to thriving in life. Okay, so we're transferring more and deeper into mindset that can work for anyone. How do we acquire this? Here's another one of my stories, another one of my shares. I was actually bankrupt at 26 years old with my first husband. We had two little girls that I adored, Alexi and Steph. And when I was pregnant with Steph, my ex-husband and his father borrowed a very large sum of money, $190,000 from my mother. The story was his father was going to go to jail if he didn't have money to pay the taxes. Went to my mother, begged and pleaded for a couple of months, put me under incredible stress. I'm pregnant with this child. It was supposed to be a six month long. Long story short, it was never paid back. That led to me not trusting, letting me down. It was horrendous. And long story short, that debt fell on me. They ended up opening up a brand new restaurant up in Erie, and I ended up with the debt. And here I am, 26 years old, right after I knew the father wasn't going to pay it back. I said, I want to move. We moved back down to Philly. We opened a chocolate store called 24 Carat Candies. And we had 84 employees and I was the youngest one. We bought out an old Philadelphia chocolate company called Moran's and it was established in 1850. That year with all the marketing I did, I got us on television. I opened up a museum. I found artifacts in this dusty basement. I opened up a museum, got us on bus tours and I ended up getting a Philadelphia entrepreneur of the year. Right after the award was given to me by an elderly attorney on the chamber panel, I said, can I talk to you? And I said, I am devastated. My husband who took this loan, we've been making money, but he signed on with new partners and bought 17 mall locations. And I didn't agree with that. I didn't know about it till the deal was signed. Again, another level of mistrust. So I divorced and I left with my two children, nothing in the bank, no ability to get a loan, three quarters of a million dollars in debt from the chocolate rents that could not be made from the mall locations. I was doing corporate chocolates from the beginning and my clients were like Boeing, Sibagagi, Strawbridge and Clother Department Store, Golden Nugget Casinos. So my division was skyrocketing. I made a sale to Philadelphia Flyers for $25,000 for chocolate hockey. Creativity can win out, but if there's somebody pulling you down and making deals behind your back, you're not going to be able to make it. That's where I was at 26, almost 27 years old. And I said, I can't do this anymore. And the attorneys there, hun, you got to get out. I figured I was better off on my own with nothing and I would start again. And somehow I'd pay my mother back. You know, some people see my accolades in the beginning. It's like, oh, wow, she had this charm life. No, I had a very difficult life. And it was the mindset for success that got me through everything. And that's why I said I started acquiring this mindset in my 20s. And when I told my ex I wanted a divorce, he said, watch how far you'll get in this town without my last name. And I said, watch me. And that's where the watch me mindset came from. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just decided I was going to do it. So at the time, I was trying to watch my girls. I started modeling part-time. A couple of the places said, you're too old to model. I was only 26. And I went to John Robert Powers, which is a chain modeling school at the time, to get a job. And it said, no, you're too old to teach. And I'm like, really? Well, I taught for the Philadelphia schools, the owner, you know, Gary Ross. And they're like, no, no, we're not going to hire you. So I walked out of there, watch me. I'll open up my own model and talent agency. And that's what I did. And I opened up with my first month's rent because I couldn't get a loan. Within six months, I competed for Model and Talent School of the Year at a national convention and won educational excellence. 
Within the year, I competed again out in LA and won school of the year. I started my first class with four people. Within the year, I had 25 in a waiting list and I was making great money. And I had a home for my daughters, a pretty house with a big lake view. It was a ranch. It was modest, but it was pretty. And I was able to buy a second property that was for my school. And I gutted the whole thing and remodeled the whole thing. I love creative tasks. I love projects, as do my daughters. But that's where the mindset came from. And slowly and with a lot of work and energy, I was able to get, make a good career for myself. I couldn't have a nine to five job because the judge says you pick up your kids at school at three o'clock. I'm there. Well, who's going to hire me? I can't leave a job at three o'clock because, oh, you'll figure it out. Well, I found out the judges were all fed for free at the restaurants of my exes. So I was not going to win in that town. I said, okay, I'll have to do my own thing. And that's when I started the model and talent agency. And within like four months as the school was doing well, maybe four to six months, I got a phone call. Is this Rihanna Milne? Yes. This is Gary Ross. I'm like, hi, Gary. Well, he didn't know me by my nickname, Rihanna. That's my full name is Terriana. And I said, I work for you in Philly. Do you remember me? Blonde. You know, I graduated in 93 and I taught as a teenager. And he goes, oh my God, I do remember you. Why didn't you work for me at my school in Erie? And I said, I went for a job. They turned me down. He goes, son of a gun, we're going out of business. You took all our business. So it was kind of like a little sweet revenge, but I didn't do it for that. I did it to support myself and my children. I was able to get back on my feet, and it took me 16 years to not only support myself and my children, but pay my mother back the $190,000 because it was the right thing to do. So when people come to me as a client and saying, I'm afraid to move on or I don't make enough money, it's like, let's find out what you can do part time. Now, there was one time in New Jersey where I had five jobs. I was a psychotherapist. I worked full times in the school. I had a singles group called Singles by the Sea. I had my wedding business called Ceremonies by the Sea. I was writing and selling my books, and I was teaching part-time at Stockton College, future counselors for the LCADC Drug and Alcohol Licensure. So I had six jobs, and I managed it. It's the mindset. If you decide you can do something, you can do it. That's what we're talking about, guts, stepping up, taking on the challenge, thinking outside of the box, taking a negative and not staying in victim mode, being a victor, not a victim. And this is what the mindset did for me. I, at the time, with my model and talent school called Rihanna Model and Talent, I had real people models from ages five to 85. And my oldest, Hildy, was one of the busiest models. She did hospital ads and billboards, and we had a great time, all of us. We were a big family, and I taught them also to believe in themselves because people would laugh at them. This is eerie. I'm modeling talent school. It's not going to take off. They all said, watch me. I am going to model. And every one of them that went to convention, IMTA was the name of the convention in New York or LA, got an offer from a big city talent agent. Had a girl that became a Rockette. Natalie Rattana was on the show VIP. My daughter, Alexi, sings on three multi-platinum CDs as a top artist, had two shows on HGTV, and now speaks around the world. You can do what you set your mind to do. And it is a definite mindset that you have to learn. And I taught my models from this small town that they can be as good as anybody else from Philly, Paris, LA, New York. And I brought in top shelf photographers and their pictures looked amazing and they looked amazing and they felt amazing and they had the aura and the feeling of success. And that's what we do. So when you're in trouble like I was, I did not have time to be a victim. I had two little girls to support. And mind you, about six months after the divorce, he went for child support too, claiming he made nothing at the family restaurant. So for 12, 13 years, I was paying child support to someone that owned me $190,000. Now, I could be stuck in my anger and play the victim, or I could say, my success is my best revenge. Me having a fabulous life, living the life I want, traveling the world, having relationships that I love and adore, that's my revenge. <laughs> So what can you do, not what can't you do? You have to retrain your mind to think in a different way and a better way because what you think about does come about. 
So this is why the mindset for success, and you saw, oh yeah, light up. And that's the aura I'm talking about of success, of feeling happy, of feeling joy in life, in love, in career. You can take many steps and it's not always going to come at once, but the goal setting that we teach gets you to where you go in a pretty quick amount of time. It took me a year to win an international award for school of the year. That's not too bad right? So the second part of this is you have to have gratitude for what you do have. At the time, I had enough to put a down money on a house, the house that it was really beautiful on a golf course setting with a lake in front of it. So I was very grateful about my house and I love my girls. I was crazy about my girls and the models were so fun. I wasn't crazy about Erie. It was cold and snowy, but the models were great people. Many of them are still on my Facebook today. Years later, I had them at six and now they have six and 10 year old kids. So these are people that become family and people you know forever. Treasure what you do have. Treasure those friendships, the family members, uh, the people you've known over the years. Reconnect with them. Start each day with a feeling of the blessings that you do have and the vision of what you want in your life. That's really important. This is what all my clients do within their meditation. We're going to do a meditation today too. Three, have a life vision with focus goal setting. Do three goals a day. Three goals a week. Now, these are three personal and three business goals a month and six goals in six months. Before I get out of bed, I say, what three things do I have to do today in what order? What's most important? These things go through my mind. So I wake up feeling very settled with purpose, have plenty of time to do what I want to do. I feel very organized. And yes, I had time to meditate as well because that is part of my daily living. Your life vision is something you're working on in a daily way. And we get very deep in that, the vision work and making a plan for your life. And then fourth, are you serving in some way, whether it's people or animals or the earth, having a higher purpose and a career success comes when you serve and you love what you do. And it has to be tied to a deeper reason. The video coming up soon with my graduate, Amy, you're going to hear about that. And my deeper reason, pain of losing Michael and Corinne, teaching people to really love their life now, live large now, don't wait, don't put it on the back burner. We don't know how much time we have. That's important. The mindset for success, what got me through working five jobs and still raising amazing, successful kids and having a ton of fun and traveling. How did I do that? without going crazy. And yet when I had a second husband that acted up, how did I climb out of that hole? It's all the mindset for success. So we can remain the victim, we'll be the victor. So, so important. And when Corinne was killed, I knew in my soul I had to do something. I needed to help women. This is my work. This is taking my pain to make it my passion and my purpose. And that's why I love what I do. And I'm driven to help as many people around the world as I can. And my clients feel that in my heart and my soul. They know that I really care. And that's when work becomes a joy. Your career, you love it. Okay. You need to go from not enough unconscious mindset to more than enough, which is the law of abundance. Now, again, you know, I'm spiritual. It's most in Middle Eastern philosophy, and I'm going to go much deeper into this in my three-day event in Fort Lauderdale, uh, teaching lessons from the master. So you really become deeply confident in the law of abundance and what I'm talking about, the mindset. It's out of the box thinking is part of this too. And it's like, what makes me different? Niching your business is very important. And if you don't know what a niche or some people call it a niche, I like the word niche, so I use it. It means taking a broad concept, like I'm a life coach. Okay, Tons of life coaches out there. I'm also a love coach and dating coach. Tons of those out there. I work with people who have had childhood and love trauma. Very small niche. I'm like known as one of the top coaches around the globe in my niche. Why? I experienced it. I have 20 years of trauma work and this is my passion. You have to take what is your passion, something you might have experienced when you were young. And I work with my individuals that aren't really crazy about their jobs. And we talk about creating a new career for themselves, keeping their main job, either starting their new one, right? I had to stay as a psychotherapist as I built my career for coaching. 
which was writing two books. I mean, the love book is 400 pages. That doesn't come easy. Live is 328. My workbooks are 150 times two, one for singles, one for couples. While I was working on building that, the mainstay was there. While I was building therapy, I was in the schools. Okay, so there's a way to build your dreams in a smart and intelligent way. We call this conscious and, and intelligent risking, saying yes and growing, 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 doing your goals and balancing it all. So we put, look for the niche. What is your passion? What would you love? And what makes you different? And that lesson I learned from my boss when I was a teen at WFIL radio, he always says, "Hun, you got to have a gimmick. You got to figure out what makes you different than everybody else. So even as a therapist, I had custom chocolates and coffee and low lighting and music in my therapy center. It was like a cushy living room with a kitchen. People love coming to my center. I've seen other counseling centers and they're dry and sterile. No, not mine. I, I did not want it that way. Police officers come in with their canine dog. I have people come in in their pajamas and slippers and they knew they were welcome. And that's what I wanted. I wanted that comfort feeling that when they came here, they had their hour to escape with me. That's out of the box thinking. What makes you different? Okay, so that's what we brainstorm together. Every business I've had, I've created with no money and no loans. It's not impossible to do exactly what you want. Having no money is not the reason that you haven't done your career. So we can build something out of nothing. Okay, we always can. Spirituality for surviving, for trust, for the faith that you can do it. Trust me, that got me through my 20s all the way through my 60s. And no matter what bad transition might have happened from the outside, not necessarily anything I did, I could still, with spiritual faith, get through it and think outside of the box and climb out of that. Do your 15 minutes of meditation every morning. Develop spiritual and conscious awareness. This is, again, part of the learning that we all do together. Use capping for positive self-talk. We talked about that definition. That means, you know, correcting your mindset constantly. You refuse thoughts of fear, negativity. There's really no anxiety anymore. You live in a state of peace and calm. There's no depression. There's no low self-esteem. If something comes up, we know in our minds how to quickly and easily correct it, which is called capping. And then there's body work. You know, taking care of your body makes a huge difference in your overall health and well-being. And my clients take this very seriously because you're feeding your cells and your brain. And again, we're trying to rid the toxins and the trauma from your body. It's all interconnected, guys. It's holistic, mind, body, spirit. The regular exercises, three a day, or I do two EMS workouts. That's electronic muscle stimulation. Sleep, seven to a half to eight hours a day is mostly suggested at regular time periods, even on weekends. Water, drink it consistently throughout the day. Most people's fatigue is due to low water consumption. Food, make sure you're buying organic. There's so many toxins leading to so many diseases and chemicals in our bodies. If you have Netflix, make sure you're going to the documentary section and watching every show you can on food. You will learn a lot. It's really, really important. Rid yourself of the childhood trauma. It's proven to have direct correlation, again, to these health, like Alzheimer's, chronic fatigue, immune system disorders, MS, and other diseases. Use vitamin therapy. I talk to everyone about how they're feeling, and I do use vitamin therapy with them, as Olya mentioned. So she turned around her health. She said, oh my God, within two weeks, I'm feeling totally different. And she did, crying stop. Her energy levels went up. She was feeling amazing about her life, but she did very well with that. And we rid toxins. We don't drink a lot of alcohol, use a lot of drugs, take medications, or smoking of any kind. We really try to stay healthy. Soul work. Okay, this is the art of abundance in your belief system to have a prosperous life. Spirituality is essential for emotional health and healing the positive mindset and transformation in all life areas. So. There's several things here. To overcome the feeling of lack, um, this could be from trauma number nine, growing up in poverty or from a dangerous neighborhood. Many of the baby boomers, oh my gosh, we heard our parents constantly talking about the lack of money, right? Put that in the chat if you heard that. Or people from World War II era, you know, not enough money, everybody's struggling. I heard that a lot as well growing up. There's not enough love. There's not enough men out there. There's not enough partners for me. I don't have enough jewelry or material goods 
or comparing yourself to someone else. You have to get a feeling of it's good enough and I feel blessed for what I do have. And then more blessings come to you. This is a spiritual law. Having a higher purpose essential to your personal career and your personal life. Working very heart-centered, have feeling about what you do and people will know it. They'll feel that and they'll want to be working with you. Living in integrity, so important. I always tell my clients, ask in your head, is this for the good of all? Is this choice, this action, these words good for everybody, not only me? Is what I'm sharing good for everyone? This is living in integrity, doing the right things when nobody's looking. And when you live in integrity, and it's mostly spiritual people do, but when you live in integrity and you're with a partner that doesn't, you just can't tolerate that anymore. It's just almost impossible to live with it. And that's why I chose to divorce. It wasn't the easiest path. But after a bankruptcy and 190000 in debt and two little girls and child support, it would have been more difficult to stay because I didn't know what was around the corner. I couldn't trust. His decisions were not the good decisions. My decisions I could trust in. Living in the now, closing off your past once you've healed it. So once all that is healed, now you're living in the now, today. And what decisions you make today based on is it good for all will propel you to the future that you want. Okay, with your goal setting plan and living in the now and working away with the goal setting that we set you up with, then you're going to reach the goals you want. I knew what I had to do to get in the Barnes & Noble bookstore. At 17, I had that dream that was going to happen. I went to a book publishing coach. I, I believe in coaching. I've had five coaches. So for my books, I took it seriously. I went to a coach and then they started class. Well, what do you want to learn out of this? What are your goals? I said, my goal is to get in the Barnes and Noble bookstore. And they all laugh at me. What did I say? Watch me. <laughs> you know, watch me. This is going to happen. I said that to myself. And I said, no, that's really my goal. You asked, that's my honest answer. And that's how that occurred. Take your dreams and goals seriously and do what you need to do to make them come to fruition. When I wanted to go from psychotherapy in a local office to global, helping as many women as I could around the world, I had to take the steps and hire on Lisa Sasevich for a year. And that was a big dedication. It was an $85,000 dedication. I sacrificed a lot financially to do that. And I said, it's a three-year commitment. I am doing everything step by step. And within six months, I was on her success panel. And I remember going to one of her events as an invitation after I bought a mission in speaking. I went and I sat there and I saw her success panel. I said to myself, I'm going to be on that success panel. I want to be up there. And again, setting the goals in your mind, which means to decide, and I'm going to go into that in a little bit. I decided I was going to be on that success panel and I made it happen. This is the mindset for success. You want to weed out the negative people who don't support you in your goals and dream and make new spiritual friends that do. And it's ironic. A lot of your family will not support you. When Alexi said at 16, when Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera is out there singing, mom, I want to be a singer. It's like, let's do it. We're going to make this happen. And I totally believed in her. And her, the rest of her family on the other side said, what? You're going to be a singer? That's an effing joke. To hear that from your father is something that can stay with you for a while. But all you need is one person to believe in you or yourself. Believe yourself first and then have that one to two other people that support your dreams. You don't need a big gang of people. But start analyzing your life. Where are people too negative in your life? You want to eliminate all unhealthy habits and your addictions and get support if you need it for that. Monitor your moods and actions. You don't want to be jealous over what other people have. Negative, rude, demanding, racist, judgmental, impatient, close-minded. The open heart, open mind. Okay? You want to be a light and love to the world. That is your goal. Indulge in your dreams. Take vacation. Take new courses. Say yes to yourself more to what you want. To learn and grow and challenge yourself. There on the left, I'm in Bangkok in an ancient Buddha temple. I love that. I went to Bali and Bangkok. Always wanted to go to the land of Eastern philosophy. And on the right is the tallest Buddha icon in the world. And right behind it, those little color ripples, those are steps going up into the inside cave where there was another temple. And not only was the 240 steps a challenge to go up, 
but there's monkeys running all around, spider monkeys. <laughs> I really didn't want a spider monkey jumping on me. I said to my friend, I said, we're going to do a color at a time, then take a couple breaths and do a next color at a time. So these are mini goals, right? To get to the big goal of getting up and inside. So this is the cool stuff that you see when you travel the world. It's been my passion. And the earlier days, no matter how poor I was, I carved out a vacation that was exciting every year for me. That was a goal that I dreamed up in my 20s. I said, how much life do I have? How much time do I have to see the world? Well, I'm going to go see it. I was happy to have a father that was also a deep thinker. He had his evils, <laughs> but we were still very close. And when I was a teenager, he taught me the five D's for success. And I have expanded them to seven D's for a reason. He says, "Hun, if you have the five D's in life, you can do anything. The desire to do something, determination, dedication, devotion, which was spiritual, and dare to dream. Dream big. Don't dream small. This carried me into the success of the Model and Talent Agency, you know, which I had over 10 years and I sold it because I wanted to be a psychotherapist. It led me into a successful therapy practice, which has led me into a successful coaching practice. But the other two Ds I added was decide, because I have found as soon as I decide in my head, I'm going to get into the game and do something and say yes to something, like making that commitment to my business coach for a year, I've made my career happen. Because I decided, I made this commitment to myself, right? And I, I make the commitment over and over every day in my meditations and in my goal setting. And then when the time gets tough, number seven, the drive keeps me going. So it could be a challenge or it's, uh, I'm not very good at tech, you know, working with my website and trying to figure out what I need to do with that or trying to figure out how to work this platform, you know. Those are the challenging times, but the drive keeps me going. So the seven Ds for success, my clients use all of these to keep us growing, motivating, learning, and you can create whatever you dream out of nothing using that principle alone. Doing a spiritual guided meditation. I'm going to give you a tip. And I actually want to do this with you. Now, our meditation that my clients do is called Divine Spiritual Meditation. It's a combination of several philosophies that I have learned and I put together. And we all love it. And it's the one that I personally use. But when I'm teaching a class, I will do a guided meditation, which means you will hear my voice. But I'd like you to make sure, of course, your phone is already should be turned off. You find a quiet place. You get in a relaxing chair. Uh, if you're in your chair now or in bed, just close your eyes. It's good to sit erect, but whatever. I just want you comfortable. And you cup your hands like a little cup and put your thumbs together like this. And close your eyes and you just simply listen. We're going to do this for about seven minutes. We're going to do seven deep breaths. Now, science has showed us over and over again that we do not get enough oxygen as humans today. So this is a very important part of meditation and feeling good all day long. We are actually changing the science and chemistry of the brain with the oxygenization that we are doing with meditation. You breathe in very deep in your nose. Now, I'm going to have you aim for a count of five. I usually do a count of seven. When you get better, you can do a count of ten on your inhale. You hold it inside from your head all the way down to below your belly, making sure the air is all the way in there for another count of five, and then you blow out for a count of five. That is step one. Now, we have four steps in our meditation, but again, I'm just going to say some words and just relax and just hear them. And I don't have this written down. It's just, I call it divine intervention. If I just channel it, I do use the word God. I hope you can be comfortable with that or divine spirit. And we'll go for about seven minutes and see how you feel afterwards. Okay, so we're going to close our eyes and start with the breathing. Here we go.
seven. Dear God and divine higher spirit, thank you so much for this blessing today and these ladies that have joined me on their Saturday to learn, to grow, to live a larger life that they desire and they certainly do deserve. I ask you, dear God, to bless them with great love and compassion and faith and courage to live the life that they truly, truly desire. I ask them from this day forward to start looking at their life in a different way, to start questioning when they're afraid and talk themselves into taking the next step in whatever they desire in their life. I ask them to have the courage to speak their feelings without fear, to have a better and more conscious relationship. I ask you, dear God, to place before them beautiful, wonderful, positive people who will enlighten their path and let them grow with faith and love and joy and find or create a really beautiful, lifelong, lasting relationship that they absolutely treasure. I ask you, God, to give them the faith to know how wonderful that they really are all their beauty and greatness as they are today and that they can grow into even more of what they love and desire. I ask you to watch over them every moment of every day and when they come to you, listen and be there and give them the faith to take one more step forward when they might be afraid. I thank you, God, for being with us each and every moment, for them to learn grow, challenge themselves, and be the best that they can be every day. I thank you, God, for all that you have given us, the many blessings that we have in our world, the simple things, our health, our homes, our children, our grandchildren, our relationship with our friends, our family, our ones that we love. I ask you to keep us in positive light with those that we love and to heal anything from the past that has been difficult, demanding, sad, fearful, challenging, uncomfortable. Give them the courage to be able to say yes to themselves more often and leave this day, our time together, knowing how absolutely wonderful that they are. This is the gift I ask you to give them today, God. This joy, this aura, this light, this love. To ask, is this for the good of all? When they make their next decision or speak their words or hug their child. Those who are parents, give them the blessing of knowing how to love their child even more and teach them the gift of confidence and believe in them, and tell them how great that they are as kids. We are all your kids. We're all God's children. Every one of us from around the world, every age, every background, every race, every color. And we're all here for a mission and a purpose and a reason. Please help us, dear Lord, to find that purpose and that reason and to step up into our greatness, to be that person that we desire to be. Let us surround ourselves with the people that will push us, encourage us, enlighten us, teach us, coach us, cheer for us, so we can grow in that direction. I thank you for this day, for all that we're learning and all that we're sharing together. Thank you, dear God. Amen. Take a couple cleansing breaths. That was six minutes exactly. Okay, so that was just a six-minute example of meditation. Type in the chat box as you come live, as you open your eyes, if you feel any different, if you feel any calmer, if you feel a different way of being. With the flush of oxygen, you should feel a little bit lightheaded definitely calmer. It is proven in science and quantum physics that meditation does lower anxiety, depression, 
cortisol, which is our fight or flight response. So it also helps you lose weight because when cortisol is high, weight stays on and lowers blood pressure and increases dopamine and serotonin levels of the brain. This is proven, this simple exercise. Now, this was only six minutes and my clients do 15 minutes a day. And like I said, they don't have my voice to guide them, but they know step by step the four steps that they need to do. And they're all different because they all ask for different things, their goals and their dreams, and they ask for guidance in the end. The last question is, God, what do you want me to know? And your intuition, or we also call it your God self, your best self, your highest self is deep within you. You learn to be more quiet. Your intuition becomes extremely keen, very high. And you learn to listen to your intuition that comes up on that last question. I could tell you tons of stories and my clients would smile because I know my stories of what my intuition has told me. But one of the answers was, I am in the house that I love. It was, I was told it was sold. It's off the market. I would never get it. I put it into my meditation, in my visualizations. A month and a half later, I hear and question for God, do what you want me to know? And they said, call the realtor. The house is yours. And I kind of jolted. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. And I called the realtor, Jessica. And I said, Jess, how about that house that I really liked? You know, I know I'm still looking. Oh, that's sold. I said, do me a favor, look it up. Call the realtor. And she calls back. She goes, oh my God, the guy was a cash deal. He ended up not moving to Florida. He just took it off last night. I said, put the offer in the house is mine. And this is a house I sit in. I can just tell you many stories like that, but that's my favorite. Okay, well, we're going to stop here for today. And next week, we'll continue part four of the series from Surviving to Thriving. The Mindset for Success in Life, Love, and Career. Okay, love angels and transformers, that's all we have time for today. I appreciate you sharing the love and the mission of helping me change the way the world loves by sending the show link to your friends who you love and care about. Please take a moment to subscribe and give a five-star rating to the show and comment on what you like about it and want to learn in an upcoming podcast episode in LessonsInLifeAndLove.com website or on your favorite podcast app. You can easily share the show from there. Remember, you can reach out for help from me during the week at my website, rihannamilne.com, and get my free ebook at havetheloveyoudeserve.com, havetheloveyoudeserve.com. And as always, I am here to help you create the life that you desire and to have the love that you deserve. Have a blessed and fabulous week. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Go to RihannaMilne.com for more resources. If you're really ready to take action to improve your life or love situation, apply now for a session with Rihanna. And remember, it's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve.